<coughs> okay, uh, today I'll present unsupervised multilingual learning for part of speech tagging, uh, which was presented at the conference for on empirical methods in natural language processing. Presenter is Yamane from Nagaoka University of Technology. So the motivation of uh, this paper is the authors hypothesized that uh, the patterns of ambiguity found in languages at the part of speech level uh, may differ in, in systematic ways. So uh, by using these patterns, uh, it's possible to find information from one language and use it to disambiguate a part of speech in, a, in other languages. So by considering multiple uh, language simultaneously, ambiguity can be reduced in each language. So by, uh, uh, by using this motivation, uh, they developed a multilingual learning approach to uh, disambiguate uh, part of speech tags in different languages. So multilingual learning, in multilingual learning, uh, cues are combined from multiple languages and the structure of each language becomes more apparent or more exposed when these cues are used or transferred between these languages. So the model that they use it is hierarchical Bayesian model for jointly predicting bilingual sequence of part of speech tags. And they evaluated their model on six languages and they, and they reported that the, the, there was a significant performance gain over uh, monolingual unsupervised baseline. So the idea is uh, the patterns of ambiguity which are present in uh, a part of speech tags uh, may differ across languages, but by using this uh, difference in patterns, for example, at the lexical level, as the example given here, um, for the word can in English, it may act as, it may be used as a auxiliary verb, noun, or uh, verb in English. So it can be used as a model, like I can do something, ability. Uh, it may be the name of a, a container, a can, or it may be the action of canning, putting stuff in a container. So there are different roles for this word can. This is in English. For the same uh, word uh, in another language, for example, in Serbian, each part of speech is expressed with a different word for this word can. So the idea is to use this, uh, the Serbian, Serbian information to disambiguate the ambiguous word can in English. So an ambiguous word in one language may correspond to an unambiguous word in another language at lexical level. And the same also at the structural level, there are some constructors which are used to uh, easily disambiguate words in one language but may be difficult in another language. So for example, in English, articles like a, an, and they, they greatly reduce the ambiguity of succeeding tag because after every article, there will be a noun, a boy, a book, and so on. But this uh, information is absent in Serbian. So by using this information in English, uh, it may be possible to disambiguate similar words in Serbian. So by using this lexical and structural information and transfer it is according, acro uh, across to multiple uh, languages, uh, it is possible to somehow disambiguate part of speech tags. So the model is, it's a bi bi bilingual model for unsupervised part of speech tagging, and there will be joint uh, tagging of parallel uh, text in two languages. So the parameters are learned using untagged bilingual parallel text, and by using this model, uh, they evaluated their system on monoling monolingual test set. So this is the graphical structure of the model. The first, the diagram A, uh, is the monolingual unsupervised uh, structure where we see um, x1, x2, x3, these are the hidden states or the tags and the emitted words are the words that are written over there, I love fish. And the, the y1 represents another language, so these are monolingual uh, languages. The second diagram, diagram B, contains a combination or a joint probability of x1 and y1, which is one lang uh, two lang uh, it represents language one and language two. Um, so um, here in this part, this is joint probability, where which they call coupling probability, and uh, we have emission of words here. And when there is no 
alignment of words, when there is no alignment of words, then the model reduces into monolingual uh, supervisor model uh, and it, it, it emits words. So this is the general structure of the, um, the, uh, the model that they have used. It's a generative model in which the words are the observed uh, states and they produce uh, they are produced by hidden tags and model parameters just like other generative models and they use a hierarchical bayesian model and this model was uh, this model enables them to uh, use the uh, spe language specific information as here this is just language specific information and also the uh, cross-lingual information by using this coupling probability so the assumption is uh, when words are paired, as here, when words are paired, there must there there could be some statistical, uh, uh, structural, or semantic uh, relationship between these two words. So they uh, statistically they assume that this uh, pair of words are correlated statistically. They, there is some correlation, uh, statistical correlation between these two uh, aligned words. So the word pairs they allow this uh, transfer of cross-lingual information to be shared by uh, joint tagging decisions. So the word alignment tool that they have used is the standard uh, GISA++, uh, which is frequently used in machine learning. And uh, the model treats aligned words as the observer data. And uh, for unaligned parts of the sentence, uh, it reduces into monolingual supervised HMM. So this is the algorithm of the generative model. First, they assume that uh, there are two existing tags, T and T prime, and two vocabularies, W and uh, W prime, for each language. So uh, the algorithm works for bilingual uh, uh, parallel corpus. And all the probabilities are drawn from symmetric Richlet priors. So in the first step, the uh, emission and transition probabilities of the two languages are going to be extracted. And then the um, bilingual coupling distribution, which is omega, over the tags, over the tag uh, product T and T prime, is going to be extracted. And this parameter is the parameter which adds the cross-lingual information in that formula. So for each language, uh, alignment is going to be drawn. And then the bilingual sequence of part of speech tags, X and uh, X1 up to Xm, uh, this is the uh, tag sequence of the first language and y1 up to yn this is the tag sequence of the, the second language this bilingual sequence of part of speech tags is going to be drawn and for each part of speech tag in the first language the word is going to be emitted and also similar to the second language uh, word w prime is going to be emitted so this is the formula of the generative model so the conditional probability of uh, the tag sequence x up to xm and y up to yn uh, given the alignment and this is the uh, transition probability of the first language transition probability of the second language and this is the coupling probability of between these two languages so uh, in this formula it's the it's the product of the unaligned terms the unaligned terms and also the aligned terms these ing are elements of the alignment so these are the transition, the product of the transition probabilities of the unaligned and also the, uh, uh, and here, here is another term. This is also a, a, by itself, it's a, pro, it's a conditional probability, which is uh, given by this form, formula. So um, the second term is the distribution over aligned tag pairs. And it is defined as the product of each language transition probability and the coupling probability. So the, the product of each language transition probability and also the coupling probability which is responsible for the cross-lingual information transfer of part of speech tag information and this constant is uh, as given here it's the integration of the transition probabilities uh, and also the coupling probability here so this formula relates the unaligned uh, information with the cross-lingual information For inferencing, they use Gibbs sampling to sample the unconditional distributions, which after so many iterations will be converted or which converges into 
um, unconditional joint probabilities. And for every uh, iteration, they, they re-estimate this uh, hyperparameter by using another algorithm, which is called uh, Metropolis uh, Husting. And uh, by using that algorithm, they re-estimate this parameter for every iteration. So in their experimental setup, they evaluated on three uh, different setups. One is when given a tag dictionary or a set of tags for every word. And another one is when uh, only incom incomplete dictionaries are available. And the third one is model is trained using untagged text, which is completely unsupervised. So their data is from George Orwell's novel, uh, 1984. And uh, it's what is originally written in English and translated into Bulgarian, Serbian, and Slovene. And the training data is a uh, random extraction of the, uh, uh, which contains three fourths of the data, and the test data is uh, the remaining one fourth of the data. Uh, the statistics of each uh, word number of words is given here. So as we can see from this tag token ratio, uh, we see that uh, English is uh, probably the most ambiguous. Uh, language from these uh, pairs. So this is the results of their baseline system. Uh, the random means uh, it's just a random um, assign, assignment of tags from the tag dictionary. And this is monolingual unsupervised, which is the baseline. And uh, they, are, they compared it with the monolingual supervised, which has high performance. And this trigram entropy uh, is, it indicates the relative performance of the monolingual unsupervised uh, baseline. How much information is needed to represent the tags. So here, uh, this result is um, when they use the full tag dictionary, when, when full tag dictionary is provided, they have this result from the three uh, uh, setups that they have uh, tried. So the first column is entropy, and uh, this is for for the bilingual um, for the bilingual model. So it represents the uh, information which is required to uh, represent uh, to transfer the information from one language to another uh, language. How much information is required to transfer from uh, the tag information from one language to another language. The mon uh, this is a repetition of the monolingual baseline, and uh, this is the actual result of the bilingual unsupervised uh, model. And here we have the absolute gain, the difference of these two uh, results. So if uh, these results, which are in bold face, are the maximum results of each language. For example, for Bulgarian, out of these pairs, six pairs, we have this 94.48, which is the highest performance, and so on for the other languages. Um, so one observation that the authors noted in these results is um, for when pairing closely related languages and distantly related languages, for example, this, um, these results are the maximum results for Slovene and uh, Serbian. And uh, Slovene and Serbian are in the same uh, language family, they are closely related languages. So when closely related languages are paired, uh, they have high performance because this uh, absolute gain is the maximum in this in this column. But uh, this is not a definite conclusion because Bulgarian, which is also um, related to Slovic, Slovene and, uh, and uh, Serbian, it gave highest performance when it was paired with English, which are distantly related languages. So it was not, uh, they, they, we cannot say that uh, pairing two um, uh, closely related languages always produces the maximum or always gives the highest information of this ambiguation. So in conclusion, uh, in this research, they demonstrated the effectiveness of multilingual learning for unsupervised part of speech tagging. And they showed that combining cues from multiple languages, uh, the structure of each becomes more apparent. And they built a model that learns language-specific uh, features as well as cross-lingual patterns. 
4 tag disambiguation and the evaluation shows that there was significant performance gain over the state-of-the-art modeling baseline. That's all. Thank you very much.